I'm standing here with Damian Priest, and thank you so much for being here. You know, you are one of those athletes that has recently kind of appeared onto Raw because you were down in NXT and now here you are on Raw and you are making a name for yourself, following yourself with Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre. But right now in the WWE, do you have a dream opponent that you have not gotten to face yet? I mean, when you're talking WWE, there's a reason why this company is what it is. I mean, it's the best talent in the world. So at some point, I want to work with everybody. But selfishly, I, I, you know, you want, you want to shoot for the stars, right? So someone like Edge, who's, already, who's a Hall of Famer that came back. I mean, this is like, I almost feel like it's meant to be. He was one of my favorites. And then we met. He's mentored me somewhat. So it, to, to get in the ring with him would mean the world. And then aside from Edge, of course, there's... Like I said, the top, the top of the stars, you know, Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley, of course, you know. So it, I, I, want, I want it all. I, I want all the attention. I want all that attraction. And it's got to start at the top. But if I name one, if I had to name one, I'm going to go with Edge. All right. So you brought up when you were a child, Edge was one of your favorite wrestlers. Is what got you into sports entertainment? Was it a match, a friend, a wrestler, a match? What was it? Well, what got me into uh, sports entertainment was a segment. It was uh, the funeral parlor with The Undertaker and Paul Bearer. And yes. He st stuck the Ultimate Warrior in the coffin, locked it, and then everybody was rushing, trying to open it. I don't know, that moment, I was so intrigued, so invested in the moment. And the way I emotionally felt, it was one of those things where I was like, man, I want to make people feel that way. Like, I want to create that type of emotion and type, that type of investment into something. And that's when I really fell in love with this business. That was a scary moment. I, 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 I do remember that. And I think everyone in their life has uh, tried a Paul Bear impression. you got a very deep voice. Do you, could you possibly give us a Paul Bear impression? I can't do a Paul Bear. I'd, I'd probably be better off trying to do an Undertaker I, one I, than a Paul Bear. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. I, my voice is definitely too deep for I, yeah, that I one. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine and someone doing a prank call, you as Paul Bear, like, who, who is this? Who, yeah. who, who is this on the phone? Not working. <laughs> no. So you're, you are a tall man, as we can all tell here. Now, you are a professional athlete, sports entertainment. If you weren't here right now doing what you're doing, what would you be doing in sports? <laughs> in sports? Uh, well, I used to fight before um, I, I started becoming a pro wrestler. Yeah. So uh, I would say some t something in martial arts, uh, whether it be still competing or instructing, something along those lines. But it'd have to be in combat, some type of combat. Okay. Okay. Now, I asked Drew McIntyre this question recently, and I asked him who would be in his fantasy faction. He actually picked you. Oh, that's cool. So, your fantasy faction, pick like two or three wrestlers. Who, past or present, it doesn't have to be now. Oof. Who would be in Damian Priest's faction? Man. You're the leader. Th that is brutal, hard question, especially when you put past or present. Yeah. Because um, uh, then it's, you know, Undertaker has to be in it since right. he's my, my, my guy, you know. Then I, I have to put Scott Hall in there. This is another one. And I'd probably go with The Rock, to be honest. You know, like those are the three guys that I would put in just because of how they made me feel watching them, you know. So I would start there. But then there's, I mean, my faction would have like 20 deep. <laughs> you know, we would, roll, we would roll heavy. So you're going NWO Hollywood with uh, ten, oh, 10 limousines yeah. pull up and they all get out and you're in the front doing the. Well, you said Scott Hall was a big, big influence on you. So it's he possibly one of your or your favorite wrestler of all time? He, he's definitely up there on that list. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of characteristics that I use today that, you know, machismo, of you know, course. like, you know, and just that swag that he had and that coolness. Uh, um, I, I mean, I fed off of that, you know, and I wanted to be like that. And the same thing with The Rock when, you know, he was very com comparable in that sense, you know, where like you look at the shirts I wear, I, I got ideas from, with the way The Rock used to dress. And I don't know, it's just that coolness, that natural coolness, too, where they weren't trying, they were just being. And, and I love that, and I feed off of that. And, but yeah, so the, Scott Hall is a thousand percent up there as one of my all-time favorites. So you brought up your shirt. Rock said his shirts were $500. Is this, is this a $600 shirt? Uh, you know, I, it's not. Um, <laughs> it's, it's less than 500 too, but... You know, uh, it, it, it serves its purpose of to course. me. So for me, it works. Uh, I don't have to spend as much as he used to, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> of course. Of course. I uh, definitely wore, I uh, definitely grew cyberns as a child to be like him. Oh, so I'm good. assuming there's fans out there who are dressing like you as well. And what do you say to those fans who are growing up? Razor Ramon, he influenced you. 
there are obviously children out there who will be influenced by you as well. Uh, what do you have to say to those fans who are achieving this goal of becoming a WWE superstar? First of all, it's wild to, you know, when the dream was to become a superstar, uh, of course, you wanted to make people feel emotion. Yeah. But, I, I, you know, it was to be a superstar, be a champion. And, and I got those things, but I didn't realize the position I was going to be in, the platform, you know. And then when you, like, for instance, you just say that, and if people are looking up to me, that's it's still wild to me. And it means the world to me, you know, because it's, I, obviously, like I said, it was something that I didn't even think of because it's just, that's out of the realm of possibility. And then here we are. Um, so to anyone that looks up to me, dresses, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's the coolest thing in the world, I think. Uh, it's wild and I am, it's humbling, uh, to be honest. Because I was going to say, I had a backyard wrestling patient when I was a little child. I dressed up as Scott Hall and The Rock. And I'm yeah. guaranteeing you kids are in it somewhere. Do not trust this home, kids. Get proper training, though. But they are 100% dressing up as you. Uh, coming down, shooting the, the bone arrows. Now, where did that even come from? Uh, you, I saw your entrance, obviously, at NXT. That's when I you know, stumbled upon you at first, at least. But the uh, arrows that shoot your name out, where did that come from? So initially, I mean, I'm a big fan of, like, superheroes and whatnot. And, and I love, like, you know, the Green Arrow and Hawkeye. And, um, but it's also, it's more, it's, you know, like, what I wanted for my name. You know, I always use the line, live forever, right? Mm -hmm. I want my name to live forever. And it was kind of like, well, what... What can I compare that to that has lived and stood the test of time? And wow, archery, like from the beginning of time, anything that I've read or anything we've seen, it's some type of involvement, whether it's for hunting or protecting yourself. And then any books or TV shows or movies for post-apocalyptic things, there's always bows and arrows. So it's like, well, this is like something that clearly is going to last forever. Right. That's kind of what I want my name to be like. I wanted to stand the test of time. I wanted to live forever, and I wanted to live in infamy. So that's where the Archer of Infamy came from. That's outstanding, because, yeah, everyone sees this entrance. And I think, at least with sports entertainment, the entrances are like the beginning. <laughs> it, you know, you're, you are a story amongst yourself. You come down, you get in the ring, you do your thing. But the beginning, once we see you, you shoot those arrows, I think you are really, at least personally for me and a lot of people I know, are sticking out from the, just your entrance and then on top of your in-ring work. So do you think that your entrance has a big influence on your overall character in popularity? I think so. Like, for me, um, entrance has always been one of the coolest parts of this business to me, even as a fan. It was always a cool thing, you know. So being that I'm in a position that I can have an entrance, I was like, well, it's got to be cool, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then I started getting these ideas. Obviously, I wanted to add the, the you know, the – the symbolic nature of the archery thing and I wanted to shoot my name into the stars and let it light up the sky and that's kind of what we do and I was like but I also love living this rock star lifestyle so I want a headbang and and I added that and just the lighting more like a concert would you know when when the front man steps in front of the yeah. stage and it's a lot of it I just combined a lot of things that I love and I think people can feed off of that energy and oh, yeah. and while I'm actually doing my entrance I could feed off of that the, the crowd's energy so it's like a dual action there, which is kind of cool. And, and I, I definitely think that people can already get invested because they, from the get-go, they, they just see excitement and mm -hmm. fun and, you know, obviously a theatrical thing. And I, I just think it works for me and, and, and the fans appreciate it. Okay. And I got one more question about Vince McMahon. You know, everyone, at least in the world, has this perception of him. But, you know, we don't work with him. You do. So... Can you share us a Vince McMahon personal story with you? Maybe something involving your, you know, we brought up archery or your hot tub scene in NXT. Uh, what can you share with Vince McMahon fans that don't know anything about him? Well, I'll say this. Uh, the first time I had a meeting with Vince McMahon, you know, I even told him, I was like, you know, you're very intimidating. Like, it's because, you know, you, we have this perception of you. And his first thing he said to me was like, yeah, don't believe what you hear, <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's... He, he's a human being, yeah. you know, he, he feels like we do, you know, uh, he has emotions like we do too. So, you know, I think there is a perception because of the business, but at the end of the day, he's a human being trying to run a business and, but he's very friendly and, you know, I, I, I kind of like the guy, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. You know, so, um, and he seems to like me, so that's a good thing. Oh, I was just saying, <laughs> right. you probably should stay on his good side. Yeah, it's a good thing to do, you know. especially when you're in this business and working in this company. Yes. No, but I would say that. That would that, be my quick little story. I don't want to give too much away from, give, I don't want to ruin his rep. Ah, uh, it's true. You know? You know, but it's I will say, rep. like, that was his line. He was, don't believe everything you hear, and with a smile. And I was like, oh, he's a cool dude, you know? Nice. So I'll give you that. All right, all right. And then I guess uh, 
Bad Bunny, everyone who was a WWE fan was like, some of them didn't know who Bad Bunny was. Others were enthralled, so excited. And then when they found out he was going to be with you, could we see Bad Bunny return in the future to team up with you? You know, it comes down to he had a perfect time in his schedule that he was like, I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move to Florida just to train and, and completely wow. invest all my energy and time into this. You know, he's not someone that just wanted to just come in and then leave or just promote something. Mm -hmm. Like, he wanted to get invested. He gets that time again where he could devote himself 100%, I believe, we'll see Bad Bunny in a WWE ring again. I, I can't wait because, again, that night at WrestleMania, that was the match of the night. Oh, I appreciate you saying that. And I've heard that again and again. And it doesn't get old. Oh, and, yeah. I, and I'm appreciated because of the work we put in and the, yeah. the, the training. And, you know, he worked really hard for the moment for us, too, because it wasn't just him and vice versa. It wasn't just about me. It was, it was about us. And uh, I'm glad it paid off. You know, it, it was twofold for me. I got to experience my first WrestleMania moment. And it was great. The feeling was intense and just exhilarating. But it was also exciting to see a, someone who I became friends with experience the same thing and see how happy he was. So for me, it was a, a two-way two street of happiness. You know, it was for me and for him, which is really cool. Because, again, a lot of people online are saying that there have been many celebrities involved with the WWE, from Mike Tyson to, uh, you know, Snooki. But Bad Bunny, they're saying it. Bad Bunny, greatest celebrity wrestler, professional sports entertainer, any team up with you, that's forever. That's a, you have the match at WrestleMania that stole the show in a lot of people's eyes. That's forever. That it, is forever. You know, I, we all love Raw and we all love SmackDown, we love NXT, but WrestleMania is like when, you know, as JBL once said, uh, this is where boys become men and men become legends. I think that night that you will go down forever as a legend just from that night. Uh, I appreciate that, and that's... That's what I want I, for me, for my name, you know, the live for everything. It's, it's moments, you know, and, and achievements. And that was all of it in one. I mean, we had a crazy moment, a wild achievement, WrestleMania. I mean, if for anybody that's in this business, you know, WrestleMania is a thing. Like, yeah. we, you want to have that, you know, more than anything. And I got to do it in a really special kind of way, in a way that, and I think what also helped us was because it was the celebrity match, mm -hmm. which I know that's what a lot of people refer to yeah. as, at us, um, it exceeded and blew away ex expectations. Right. So I think because of that, it just made our moment even bigger. Um, so I, it was the perfect uh, scenario for me in my debut at WrestleMania for him, us teaming together, forming an actual bond, um, and enjoying every second of it. And I'm, and I'm just glad that everybody enjoyed it with us. Outstanding. Damian Priest, thank you so much for My being pleasure. here. Thank you. Thank you. Can we take a picture? Absolutely.